Shalom, beloved. A word. We're in the book of Hermes. Some people call it the book of similitudes. Chapter 9, verse 109 to 111. We are speaking about Yahushua HaMashiach. Beginning at verse 109, first of all, sir, said I, tell me what this rock and this gate do note. Hearken, said he, this rock and this gate are the son of God. I replied, sir, how can that be? Seeing the rock is old, but the gate new. Here, said he, O oh foolish man, and understand. The son of Yah is indeed more ancient than any creature, insomuch that he was in counsel with his father at the creation of all things. But the gate is therefore new because he appeared in the last days in the fullness of time that they who shall attain unto salvation may enter into the kingdom of Yahuwah. Yes, he is both the rock and the gate, that ancient rock, beloved, which is more ancient than any creature inasmuch as he was in counsel with his father at the creation of all things. Yes, when we go into the book of Genesis, we are talking about Yahusha. Many people call him Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. In the beginning, Yah created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Yah moved upon the face of the waters. And Yah said, let there be light. And there was light. As we go through the beginning and the creation of heaven and earth, we hear the Most High speak. And we know that his word goes out and does not come back void. But when we look and we hear his word, that great word, we also find that Yeshua HaMashiach is, in fact, that word of the Most High. When we look in the book of Revelations, chapter 19, Verse 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, the Word of Yah. When we look at Yeshua HaMashiach, many call him Jesus, he is also called the Word of the Most High. So when we hear that he was in the beginning, he is ancient, more ancient than any other creation. We know that he is that word of the most high. Many people have a confusion about how they worship the most high in regard to Yahushua HaMashiach, many call him Jesus. But we are told, beloved, to worship Yah, not Jesus, not Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the word of the most high. And when we speak Yah's word, honoring and believing him, we take unto ourselves the spirit of life because we know his word goes out, does not come back forth. And that word, which is the word of the most high, his name by many people's standards is Jesus his name is also called Yeshua HaMashiach. We are going to go now into the book of John, chapter 5. Going down into, I was going to start at the bottom verse, but I'm going to go up. Okay? Because many people are get confused and they want to give glory and honor and praise to Yeshua, when in fact you worship Yahuwah, the Father, 
Jesus is his word. All right. And he tells you, you honor him by believing his word. When we go into the book of John, chapter five, verse 19, Yeshua is talking. Then said Yeshua unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he see if the father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son and show him all things that himself do it, and he shall show him greater works than these. For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. For the father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the son. Why would the judgment be committed unto the son? Because the things that people do shall be judged by the word of the most high. And the son is that word, that living word of Yah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life. I am in verse 24 and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes. When we look at verse 22, for the father judges no man, but have committed all judgment unto the son. Who is the son? The son is the father's word, the word of the most high, that all men should honor the son, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which has sent him. Beloved, we have seen how Yasharel fell away from the Most High by not honoring the Son, the Son being the word of the Most High. He gave us commands, laws, and judgments. And when we did not honor him, his word, we fell into condemnation, this 400 years of a curse. His word went out. It did not come back void. Even the word that Moshe gave was, in fact, that word of God, which is, in fact, Yeshua HaMashiach. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of Yah, and they that hear shall live. Yes. We have many people among us, beloved, who are literally the walking dead. When we watch that show, The Walking Dead, it's not just that they are condemned to die that physical death because they don't have the spirit of life in them. They are condemned to die that final death, twice dead. Just as we read in the book of Jude, I'm trying to find it, forgive me, beloved. As we read in the book of Jude, I had it, forgive me, and lost it. But, he calls them twice dead, beloved. Yes, I'm going to come out of this because I do not want to read it wrong. Here it is. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Those who are twice dead, they have not the spirit of life in them. And what is that spirit of life? The word of the Most High Yah. That spirit of life that Yeshua brought to save and redeem those who have passed over into death because of the sin of Adam. But believing have moved into life. But there are others who are twice dead. These are spots at your feast of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, 
without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. There are many beloved that preach and teach the law, but they don't believe in the New Testament. But that word, that word of life, where they speak of the law, never understanding that if you're speaking about the law, the law is and was the word of God. And we go back into the book of John. We go down unto the 46th verse. These are people who are speaking in Yeshua and they did not believe. All right. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start at the 37th ver verse. And the father himself, which has sent me, who is me, the word of the most high, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent. Him ye believe not. Search the scriptures for in them you think ye have eternal life and that they which, and that, and they are they which testify of me. Yes. And ye will not come unto me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, that ye have not the love of Yah in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor which cometh from Yah only? Do not think I will accuse you to your father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, yea, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? Beloved, these were many people who were believing the law and the prophets and believing in Moshe, but they would not believe in Yeshua, not recognizing that the words that Moshe spoke were the word of God, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes, there is one that accuses you, even Moses in whom ye trust. Mm, yes, yes, yes. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Yes, we know Moshe wrote the first five books of the scripture. In the beginning, any time when Yah said, let there be light. Any time when Yah said, that is the word going out. Moshe is speaking about Yeshua HaMashiach, that word of the Most High. We can also go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Moshe is still talking. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. This is Moshe talking about the word of the Most High. And we know that Yeshua HaMashiach is in fact, we're going back to the book of Revelations, chapter 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yah. That is who. Many people look at Jesus, Yahusha, as a man, as a central figure unto himself, and pray to him. No. It also tells you, worship Yah. You speak and pray in the name of because you are literally speaking Yah's words back to him. And we know his word goes out, does not come back for you. It is a living word. All right. Now, when we look into the book of Romans, I'm trying to make sure that I have it. 
when we look into the book of Romans, those who believe on the word of the Most High, that Yeshua HaMashiach came into the world as flesh, he died for the sinners and was raised on the third day. Those who believe are filled with that spirit of life. Just as our father Abraham believed Yahuwah and it was counted unto him as righteousness, he believed. Now, when we go into the book of Romans chapter eight, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yah sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Yes, yes, beloved. When we look at what Yeshua did for us, okay? We go down to verse 10, for if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit of life, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahusha from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. We love it. Those of us, we know that that death came through Adam because he believed not the word of the Most High and he sinned and death passed on to all because of Adam. All who believe in the word, he sent him into immortal flesh that any who believe on him he died in our place to take on that sin that we might find forgiveness, all right? Again, I'm going to verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of Yah, they are the sons, the children of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit. When I was reading this and I was moving throughout the chapters, it was speaking about Adam and how we know that word is still in effect now. The day that thou eat of that fruit, thou shalt surely die and death passed on to all those who have Adam's DNA. But now we have the spiritual DNA of Yeshua HaMashiach because we believed him and we are walking in life. There are those among us, beloved, who they believe the Old Testament, but they don't believe the new. When, in fact, they're one in the same. They're just moving and speaking of that word of the Most High. His word that goes out and does not come back void. His word, sharper than any two-edged sword to the dividing asunder of bone and marrow, soul and spirit. His word that sees all the thoughts in, of men and knows the contents of his heart. His word that has that redeeming power that separates us from those who don't believe in the most high and who go into condemnation, all we have to do when we look at it. Yah in the past sent his word. When he sent the 12 spies to spy out the land of Canaan, 10 came back with an evil report. Why? Because they did not believe his word. They took the word of man over his word. And they had to wander through that wilderness for 40 years. And only Joshua and Caleb who were faithful to his word. Whose word? The word of the most high. His word was with them. 
when they were in the wilderness. That same word being Yeshua HaMashiach. The difference being he had not put on that robe of flesh yet. But it was the one and same Yeshua HaMashiach. And any time we see where any of us do not follow his word, whose word? The word of the Most High. We always fall short, beloved. His word put on flesh that we might have life and life more abundantly. Yah doesn't want so much as one of us to be lost. And that word, that word is ancient, beloved. When we go back in the lost books of the Bible, the book of Hermes, the similar to chapter 9, verse 109 to 111, We see, first of all, sir, said I, tell me what this rock and this gate denote. What are they? What do they mean? He's asking. Hawkin said he, this rock and this gate are the son of Yah. I replied, sir, how can that be? Seeing the rock is old, but the gate new. Here said he, oh foolish man, and understand. The son of Yah is indeed more ancient than any creature, in so, much that, in so much that he was in counsel with his father at the creation of all things. How do we know this to be sure, beloved? We're going to look at what Yah said. What did his words say? We are going to the beginning, all the way back. Book of Genesis, chapter one, verse 26. And Yah said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Yah created man in his own image. In the image of Yah created he him, male and female created he them. But he said, let us, let us. Who is the us? He is speak his word because we know when the word of the Most High goes out, it does not come back void. It does exactly what he purposed it to do. It was that same word that was creating man in the image of the most high. So when we go back and read, hmm, we are in the lost books, the book of Hermes, similar to chapter nine, I'm going here to verse 110. Here said he, oh foolish man, and understand the son of God is indeed more ancient than any creature. In so much that he was in counsel with his father at the creation of all things. He was in counsel at the creation of man. Why? Because we know Yeshua HaMashiach is the word of God. His word that goes out and does not come back void, but does exactly what he accomplished it to do, intended it to do. He is both an ancient rock and a gate. Mm. But the gate is therefore new because he appeared in the last days. Yes, yes, yes. In the fullness of time that they who shall attain unto salvation may enter into the kingdom of the most high. Yes, beloved. He is that gate. He is that gate that we enter in. Okay. How? His word, beloved. Many of us. Some of us get confused about that word of the most high. But let's look at the world and consider the world a dark place where many of us are on a road in darkness. Remember, what does the word of God do? He is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. Why? Because as we move about, imagine you're in a building trying to get out. And the one who came to save you, you can't see him, but you hear him. You hear his voice, all right? That voice that you trust in, 
And as he guides you through, you have to trust in his word, his word intent to save you. Because that word, that world that we're in that building is going to be destroyed, but you are not supposed to be destroyed with it. Okay, that building, this earth that we know, this world that we know, that fire is going to consume. Mm, but he has come back for his beloved. How does he save us in the dark before the fire consumes this world? His word comes in and it directs us. And if we trust his word, we find life instead of destruction. But beloved, you have those among us who whisper and tell you, don't trust it. No, don't follow that way. Follow my way. There's only one way and that way being the word of the most high beloved. When we trust his word, there's salvation in his word. There's life. In his word, there is hope in his word that does not fail. And many of us, when we hear his voice and follow his directions, that same said word, that word, which is the son of God who came to save to the utmost. When we trust him, that is when not only do we find our way through the darkness, but we enter into a path that grows brighter and brighter, beloved. That word is the son of the most high. He does not lie and he does not fail, beloved. It is that word that I am speaking of this day. But many people, they trust only in the law. But Yeshua HaMashiach said to them, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. When you're under the spirit, the spirit is never contrary to the law. The spirit does not work contrary to the law. But at the same time, beloved, we also know that in Yeshua HaMashiach, believing in him, we have now found grace because he knows that that spirit of sin that came through Adam is in us all. Even when we want to do that, which is right, and we don't, it's the sin that does it. But in our innermost person, we believe and we have received, all right? But what did the word do? Because he saves to the utmost those who believe. Hmm. Now, we are in the book of Romans. Let me get the chapter correct. We are in the book of Romans, chapter five. All right. We are starting at the 14th verse. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of Yah and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Yeshua HaMashiach, have abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. You see, it was one thing that Adam sinned in. He did not listen when God told him, the fruit of that tree thou shall not eat. The fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For when ye eat in that day, you shall surely die. That was one sin. And because of one sin, death reigned, not just on Adam and Eve, but on all those who share in his DNA. And death remains unto this day. But the grace, the glory, the abundant, goodness of our father through his word 
through his perfect sacrifice, Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm, mm, mm. Wait a minute now. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, one sin, one sin brought death, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yeshua HaMashiach. I want to go back up to verse 16 so that we can finish as we go through this. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one, one sin to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. You see, the beauty, the kindness, the mercy, and the glory of our Father. Woo, wait a minute now. When Yeshua HaMashiach came and died. For our sins. It was multiple sins that he took on that are forgiven. Not one sin, multiple sins. Death came through Adam from one sin. But when Yeshua HaMashiach came and died for us that we might have life and have it more abundantly, he didn't die <coughs> for one sin that we did. That grace is so overwhelming and so beautiful. It covers a multitude of sins when we believe in him. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Mm. Woo, woo. I'm going to get some glory, some honor. Thank you, Father. Woo. Mm. Wait a minute now. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, one offense. Mm. Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Mm. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience, Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Yes, that is sin had reigned unto death. Even so, my grace reigned through the righteousness unto eternal life by Yah, by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Beloved, this day, we together, we ask you, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, believing thy word and the merciful sacrifice of our brother, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, that died for our sins. We ask that you come into our lives and save us, forgive us, for we are sinners, all of us. But we believe and receive that word of life, and we accept you, Father, in the truth of thy word. We thank you, praise you, honor and glorify you. And we thank Yeshua HaMashiach that he gave his life that we might have it more abundantly. And you raised him from the dead on the third day because the grave could not hold him. And that same life that you put into Yeshua HaMashiach is in us who believe. We thank you believing and receiving the completeness of the book. He is the fullness of the book. That's who Yeshua HaMashiach is, the word of the Most High Yah. We believe you, Father, just like our father Abraham believed you. And we thank you this day as we repent for our sins, asking that the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach come into our lives and save us from our sins. We thank you, praise you, honor and glorify you, Father, for we worship you in the name and in the word of Yah, Yeshua HaMashiach, giving all honor and glory to thy Holy Spirit and let it come upon us. Let it rain on us, Father, and anoint us and guide us through this world. We thank you. Amen. Beloved, this is a word 
a word given for the children of the Most High Yah. As we recognize, we are being saved to the utmost. And we don't just believe one part of the book of the Most High God. We believe the totality. He came in the volume of the book. Who? Yeshua HaMashiach. Why? Because he is the word of the Most High. He is the volume of the book. And we thank him that he died for our sins and the sins of others that we might have life, true life. And when we leave this world and go on, we shall never know death again. Beloved, a word. Shalom.